Hello my fellow geeks and nerds, it's Christy, and I am back with a video, this time capturing the latest developments on the issue revolving around women and selective service in the US military. There's a lot of news going on right now and a lot of important topics. And there was the um, Orlando mass murder terrorist act hate crime that happened. The US presidential election is Trump is always making headlines almost every day. And this story I felt was very important to pull out of the news cycle and bring some attention to because I think in any other year or in any other time period, this probably would have gotten a lot more debate and attention than it has. What I'm going to be doing in this video is just walking through the most recent developments related to women being included in selective service, also known as the draft, in the US and where that is going. First, some facts about selective service, and I pulled this right from a New York Times article. All of the news articles that I am using in this video, I will always, of course, provide links for in the description box below. Now, the United States has not actually used the draft since 1973 during the Vietnam War, but it still exists as a process. And if we were to go into a, an emergency like national crisis situation, Congress would have the ability to basically use selective service to reinstitute the draft. So that has been going on basically um, has not been used since 1973, but it still exists and men still have to sign up for it when they within so, so many days of turning 18. In 1981, the Supreme Court ruled that women did not have to register for the draft because they did not face the same requirements as men do in terms of participation on the front lines. But in under the Obama administration, all combat jobs have been opened up to women, and therefore military officials have told Congress women should also be signing up for the draft. So here is what happened. Basically, someone tried to troll a bill and it ended up backfiring. The House Armed Services Committee adopted a proposal that would require women register for selective service in the event of a military draft, even though its GOP sponsor voted against it and was only using it to make a point about women serving on the front lines. Representative Duncan Hunter voted against his own amendment, but it passed by a vote of 32 to 30. And he never intended to include women in a draft and therefore voted down his own amendment. Hunter actually opposes the Pentagon's decision to open up all combat jobs to women. And he argued that his colleagues have failed in their duty to account for the implications of the, that shift. Said Hunter, I've talked to coffeehouse liberals in San Francisco and conservative families who pray three times a day, and neither of those groups want their daughters to be drafted. When he actually put it up for a vote, the proposal attracted the support of nearly all the Democrats on the panel. The media didn't report which Democrat or Democrats opposed it. And six Republicans also supported it, giving it enough votes, 32 to 30, to be passed. One would think with this event going on that Republicans would then take the opportunity to continue this change, or that if feminists really were interested in double standards and making sure that men are the disposable sex in terms of military conflict, that feminists would, mass would organize a massive opposition to this bill. But that's not what happened. The fact is that House Republicans basically killed the idea, they killed the proposal. The Rules Committee voted to cut off consideration of the issue on the floor and strike the entire section of that bill, the one that would allow women to be included in the draft, from the overall proposal. The USA Today newspaper writes, the unusual but not unprecedented procedural move avoids what could be a thorny debate for both parties over women's rights and roles in the military. Democrats decried the idea as cowardice because they wanted to have the vote, and it was Republicans who denied it to them. On Tuesday, the U.S. Senate approved a bill that would require women to register for the draft. And while it was fiercely opposed by some conservative lawmakers and interest groups, it had broad support among Republican leaders and women in both parties. While most Republican senators agree with the move, it has come under attack from some members of Congress. And would that be the feminist members of Congress? No, it comes from the religiously conservative members of Congress. It comes from the religiously conservative patriarchal members of Congress. 
The idea that we should forcibly conscript young girls in combat, to my mind, makes no sense at all, said Ted Cruz. He also said, I could not in good conscience vote to draft our daughters into the military, sending them off to war and forcing them into combat. Notice that Cruz doesn't give a crap about the boys that are being are having to be conscripted into war. He's basically carving out a special pleading for daughters based on his sexism. Conservative groups, which threatened to target senators who voted for the policy, reacted with anger on Tuesday. Quote, allowing our daughters to be forced into combat if there is a draft is a clear example of Washington placing more value on liberal social engineering than military objectives and preparedness. This was the Heritage Action for America group in this case. Let's compare feminist reactions. It was President Obama, who decided late last year to allow women to serve in all combat roles. And in March, he also appointed the first female combat commander to U.S. Northern Command. How did the most well-known feminist running for office right now require? Did she demand special protection for women and double standards? Clinton is now on record saying that she supports a voluntary military service, which I would also agree with. I don't think anyone should be drafted, but if there is going to be a draft, then it should be equal. And Clinton says she supports a measure requiring women to register for the draft um, while maintaining that she actually, her position is to support a voluntary force. What about the National Organization for Women? You would think that an organization that has existed in the United States as a feminist group for decades, if you believe anti-feminists, would have been clamoring for double standards and special treatment for women since the 1980s when this issue came up before the Supreme Court. Well, it's just the opposite. The National Organization for Women have argued that women should be included in the selective service. We have here a quote from the president of the organization at the time, Eleanor Smeal, who said, the male-only system quote, to services society as it creates a pool of eligibles much more limited in number and ability than if it included women. So the idea here that, you know, feminists are the problem and feminists are demanding double standards really doesn't bear close examination of the evidence. In contrast, who do we hear using patriarchal double standards? It's religious groups. It's people on the right. It's conservatives. Further, it's women and feminists who have done the work to do the change of the policies here and are advancing the change, while MRAs are just complaining and raging against women and against feminist men and women, and they've done nothing on this issue. Gary Bauer, president of American Values, said, I do not support putting women into direct combat, and I think including young women in draft registration is a terrible idea. Elaine Donnelly, president of the Center for Military Readiness, said, requiring women to register for selective service is unequal and unfair to women and certainly harmful to the military. Major Michael Berry, who is currently director of military affairs at Liberty Institute, said, drafting women is a dangerous idea that disregards the natural differences between men and women. It also raises a lot of questions. Will women be allowed to be conscientious objectors because of their sincere religious belief that women should not be conscripted to fight wars? Will they conscript women who are pregnant or have young children? This is just another step toward removing constitutional protections that have existed since the time of our nation's founders in the name of political correctness. And David Thoreau, founder and president of, independent, of the Independent Institute, said, we are quite firmly against women being required to register for selective service. This is just more inane, progressive, i.e. authoritarian, involuntary servitude, all in the name of feminism. I think it was worth documenting this current debate and also an evidence-based account of what has happened. Basically, you had a Republican trying to be a jerk and trying to make a point to say, oh, if I push, when push comes to shove, these people don't really want equality. Well, actually, yeah, people are ready for equality. And we're also seeing that now feminist ideas about women's participation are being mainstreamed. We're seeing Republicans who are willing to vote for the idea of women being in the military when it is the right-wing, far right-wing, uh, patriarchal religious men who, and those kinds of institutions that are bound up with patriarchy and the idea that women and men have special roles and therefore have to be treated unequally, that are the ones who are objecting to this. So just as a little counterbalance of evidence from MRI talking points, this is the reality, not the stuff they make up. 
I thought it was important to get these facts out and on the record and also to, you know, start the discussion about equality and recognition that women and feminists have been pushing for this kind of equality, not just this uh, narrative that's put up by MRA types about disposable men. You have to look at this issue and look at who your allies are and who your enemies are. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I appreciate your time and attention. I've been Christy. You've been awesome. I'll talk to you soon.